So everybody, this is uh, uh, Kim Elliott. Um, uh, we've gotten to know Kim through our uh, digital net on uh, Monday nights. And uh, Kim has a really, really interesting uh, background here and story to tell about um, uh, uh, amateur radio. And um, uh, he has been running for a number of years a program called Shortwave Radiogram, which uses the digital modes of amateur radio to broadcast worldwide, like Voice of America used to do in voice, but all, all over the world. And so we're really um, excited and happy to have you with us, Kim. So with that, let me go ahead and turn it over to you. Okay, thank you, Dean, Andrew, everybody else for having me at your meeting tonight. This, I think, is my second presentation to the VWS because uh, I did one before, maybe in the 1980s, no later than the 1990s, I was talking about Voice of America then, I'm like, still working, I was before I retired. So I, I'm back and uh, happy to be back. So I'm Kim Elliott, KD9XB, my nine call is from Indiana, where I uh, uh, am from originally. So uh, the idea of shortwave radiogram came uh, right around 2011, 2012. Uh, two things were going on. I was working at Voice of America back then, and um, it was about the time that countries were starting to block the internet. China certainly was doing so. Iran was starting to do so. Other countries were looking into it. Uh, so that was a concern. Uh, what are we gonna do about uh, uh, countries that block the internet since we're using the internet more and more to broadcast into those countries and, and less and less in short wave. At about the same time, I was also introduced to the digital modes of amateur radio. Uh, I saw a demonstration of PSK31, which was the all the rage back then. It's been displaced by FT8 to a large extent since then. But uh, I was just amazed how well it worked, how a s tiny sliver of data uh, on the spectrum and a, and a signal could, that could barely be heard uh, produced text. So I thought, well, if, if we can transmit text on shortwave, um, could we maybe use text via shortwave to uh, circumvent blockage on the internet? And uh, this kind of crude chart here was my idea. Uh, the, the vertical line is where a country will block um, uh, uh, information at the border. So you use shortwave, maybe satellite, to get the signal up into the sky, and then it goes back down into the target country. But um, the... Um, probably will not be audiences of millions anymore on shortwave. So I call them key users. These would be the enthusiast shortwave listeners, the radio amateurs, maybe some people with government and military connections who have radios. And then they would pass the information uh, on to the rest of the country on the target country's internet, or maybe you could call it an intranet. Uh, so that was my idea. I thought, well, now how can we do this uh, since you probably need a, a, a transceiver or a, a fancy receiver, a sideband uh, to um, to uh, receive uh, digital modes. But uh, my mentor uh, uh, engineer at VOA told me, no, it's uh, uh, audio is audio uh, and uh, it doesn't matter if it's sideband or AM. So the thing is, you can receive digital modes via plain old AM amplitude modulation. And that means cheap shortwave radios can receive it. And uh, it has proven to work. Um, so uh, after months and over a year of bureaucracy, uh, VOA finally let me um, uh, transmit a program called VOA Radiogram for four half hours each weekend. These were all from the uh, Greenville, North Carolina transmitting station that VOA has had since the early 60s. The big curtain antennas, it's wonderful, uh, wonderful reception in Europe, and it got all the way to, to Australia. Um, we tried almost all the modes that were available on amateur radio. I tried the BPSKs, the QPSKs, the MT62s, the Olivias, and the uh, Dominoes, and and the, uh, uh, I can't remember them all, but we, we tried them side by side, uh, modes of similar um, speeds, words per minute. Um, and ultimately we decided that uh, the MFSK32 and MFSK64 uh, worked out best for shortwave. They were the best combination of speed and performance in shortwave conditions. If we got up 
faster modes, um, often they would fail uh, in typical shortwave conditions and slower modes were just so slow that it was uh, um, hard to get an entire news story out. But MFSK 32 at 120 words per minute and 64 at 240 words per minute um, turned out to be most successful and they had the uh, added um, benefit of being able to transmit pictures. So we were able to en enhance our stories with, with pictures. Um, I retired uh, at VOA in 2017 after 32 years. Most of my time there, I was doing audience research, but I was a broadcaster also for a while. Um, I, and I wanted to stay on as a contractor, you know, maybe for $5 a month. But uh, they declined uh, my offer. I think they wanted me out the door once and for all. Uh, and uh, I wanted, didn't want to have anything more to do with me and my crazy ideas. So um, I, I was able to, the, the, the week after I retired, I shifted the program to the private shortwave stations in the U.S. Um, and called it shortwave radiogram. And it goes out seven times each weekend. WRMI in Florida is one of the stations. Uh, that station in Florida has an interesting pedigree. It's um, several transmitters down there. It dates back to the old WRUL, which was one of the first shortwave stations in the U.S. It had transmitters in Situate, Massachusetts, uh, and, and later it was called Radio New York Worldwide. That station was purchased by a religious broadcasting organization and moved to Florida, and then uh, it has been purchased again by an organization called Radio Miami International. And uh, Jeff White there has, has kindly given me some time. And um, WINB in Pennsylvania, which is another station, it's one of the old, it's the first shortwave station that was licensed after World War II, um, is also uh, putting me on the air. Uh, it is transmitted in AM because, you know, these are shortwave broadcast transmitters. Uh, and there's also a one transmission in DRM, Digital Radio Mondial, but um, that usually doesn't work out very well. So uh, we focus on the AM ones. Uh, even though it's transmitted in AM, you can you can receive it in AM mode or you can receive it in upper side band or lower side band. And sometimes that helps if there's interference either side of the frequency. Reception, now you can receive the, sh the program on a, on a fancy amateur radio transceiver. Uh, it's the nice thing about transceivers nowadays is that they have general coverage receivers, so they receive all the broadcast bands. Um, you might need a, an interface like the signal link uh, to get it to work with your computer, um, but the newer transceivers uh, have built-in sound cards, so you don't need the interface. Or you can use a receiver, like a communications receiver, or you can just use an inexpensive portable with no sideband capability at all. All you have to do is somehow get the audio into your PC, which has the correct software, which I'll get to in a moment. Or uh, finally, you can, on the web, you know, you can access several SDRs at Tune Shortwave in various parts of the world. So if you want to see how the signal from WRMI is getting into Europe. You just uh, access the SDR over in Europe and see how that works. For decoding, most people are using FL Digi from W1HKJ.com. It has pretty much all the modes we would ever use on shortwave radiogram. Um, probably second most popular is a, a, a software called Multi PSK from, uh, from France. F F6CTE.free.fr. And then finally, if you, if you want to try it on your Android device, uh, there's a thing called TVAR, Text and Images via Amateur Radio, and uh, it's Big Brothers and FL Message, which is a Android app for both transmitting and receiving, decoding and encoding. Um, and those you can also get from W1HKJ.com. Um, and just to give you an idea of how easy it can be to receive and decode, uh, this is a listener in Europe does it this way. He gets a, a cheap uh, transceiver, a pretty cheap Chinese-made transceiver, a Texan, and, and then he's got an Android phone, and he just places them next to each other, not even a patch cord, because patch cords into a Android device are, are difficult. 
so the the sound from the speaker just goes into the mic hole on the uh, Android device, and and you maybe can see the decoding of the uh, text going on there. So that's that's how easy it can get, and how simple and how cheap it can get. Um, the format of the show, I usually do a very short voice introduction with some music at the beginning. Then we do a news item in MFSK32. That's the, the, the 120 words, 120 words per minute. And then, uh, and then we switch to MFSK64 and, uh, and do another news item, hoping that conditions are good enough for the 64. And then we get into the images of the week. And even though the images are not as important as the text, uh, the images are more fun to decode. Everybody loves doing that. So, uh, uh, I usually transmit anywhere from eight to 10, maybe 11 of them each week. And, and the FL Digi software will, will, will display the images as well as the text. Occasionally we do experiment with, with other modes. Uh, sometimes they're slower modes and sometimes they're faster modes. Here's an example of a listener who sent in uh, often Listeners will put together a montage of, of the pictures they've received. Um, the thing in the bottom right is a uh, waterfall ID that we transmit at the beginning of each half hour. And uh, so you can see the photos there, including the art. We always do a painting of the week or art of the week. And then in the lower left-hand corner, you can see text, but you'll see the text looks kind of weird. Well, that is... I think it's Burmese. We practiced, we experimented with Burmese and this excerpt of Burmese text had a few uh, English names or Latin alphabet names. So those are mixed in, but it's mostly Burmese. And that's just to show that we can, we can transmit uh, English and Latin alphabets, but we can also do more exotic, exotic alphabets like Chinese and Arabic and Persian right to left alphabets. Um, Russian and Czech with all the diacritics. Uh, so we can do that, and that's the potential of getting into countries that might block the internet. Um, now, this is uh, by way of showing you the variety of images that are received. Um, in the upper left hand corner is the image uh, as, as transmitted, the image I had here in the studio. And then the other three are as received by listeners in various parts of the world. And as you can see, if reception is good, you'll get the one in the upper right. If reception is kind of fair and average, the uh, lower left. And then finally, if you got really, really, really rough reception, uh, the lower right. But uh, we like these types of images, the ones that come in difficult conditions, because what you do is you, you're turning a, a, a photograph into a uh, impressionist painting. And, and we, we love what, what, what the shortwave will do. Uh, to images. Also, uh, even in conditions where the pictures are fuzzy, the text often comes out either 100% uh, or at least 90% because the text has error correction, um, which is great for shortwave, whereas the pictures are just analog and don't have error correction. Here's the schedule, but don't try to copy all this down because it'll, it'll, it's at the website and I'll give you the URL in a little bit. But I do want to mention there's one more transmission. Um, there's a transmission tonight, uh, the Saturday 0230, 0300 UTC. That's 1030 p.m. tonight, Eastern time. And the frequency is 9265 kilohertz. That's from WINB in Red Lion, Pennsylvania, which is about 200 kilometers from here. So mainly we're in the skip zone for that. However, if you tune tonight at 1030 on 9265, you'll probably hear a faint signal. And that faint signal will be such that you probably won't be able to under, understand what the radio preacher is saying who comes on before my show. But um, when the MFSK32 starts just after 10.30 p.m., um, and you're decoding it, you you'll, could well be surprised at how well the MFSK32 decodes in really terrible conditions because we're in the skip zone. We're hard. I don't know if uh, a short 
hop or if it's we're at the end, edge of ground wave for WINB, but it's it's good practice for weak signal MFSK32. So that's 10.30 p.m. tonight, 9265. Um, so for information, uh, the main thing you want to go to is the website, swradiogram.net, um, swradiogram.net. Uh, or you can email me with questions, radiogram at verizon.net. Twitter, if you're on Twitter, just go to the SW Radiogram Twitter account. And if you're not on Twitter, just go to the web, uh, do it, get there by web, tw twitter.com SW Radiogram, and just scroll down. And uh, I, I wasn't going to try to uh, do audio and decoding tonight because I'm just afraid there, something will go wrong when you try to combine audio with images but if you there are a lot of youtube videos of shortwave radiogram in action and you can watch the decoding taking place in those videos or you can borrow the audio from those videos and decode yourself so here's one from last week it's you the, the short version of youtube which is u2.be and then uh, this one and uh, it's capital i lowercase i lowercase b four lowercase o, capital K, capital K, lowercase i, lowercase b, capital A, capital Y, and uh, and if you don't get that, we'll just do a search on YouTube for shortwave radiogram and you'll find videos. Uh, I also want to mention the Mighty KBC, which is a, it's a transmission Saturday nights, our time. It, it's kind of, it's sort of like pirate radio uh, of the 60s in, in Europe. Uh, but uh, it transmits uh, on 5960 kilohertz from a transmitter in Germany in the AM mode because it's a shortwave broadcast. Uh, the two hours consist of oldies, a real interesting mix of oldies, including uh, some that you may not have heard or haven't heard for a long time, and two great DJs, uh, uh, Dave Simon in uh, uh, Scotland, recording studio in Scotland, and, and uh, Eric von Willigan in the Netherlands, who heads up the organization. Anyway, they let me put a minute of MFSK 64 on at uh, 2130 UT EDT, which is 130 UTC. And what I do is uh, what uh, a musician, usually a rock musician from 50s, 60s, or 70s, is having a birthday in the weekend, I transmit that musician's picture and uh, a little bit of text information about it. And then uh, Eric afterwards will play a, a tune by that musician. So that's something fun to do on a Saturday night uh, on 5960 kilohertz from uh, 8 to 10 p.m. our time. Um, he sticks with uh, UTC, so uh, when we get to uh, winter time, uh, he'll, it'll be 7 to 9 p.m. And that's that's pretty much it for the presentation. So I will try to unshare. So uh, we do have a few minutes for questions. A uh, quick question: uh, do, do you know which countries that uh, these broadcasts have been directed at? You know, uh, as a means of filling in because they're kind of cut off. Well, unfortunately, so far the the, the concept hasn't been used in real in, in real life. I'd like to get um, broadcasters interested in this. Um, I have not done a very good job of marketing the concept. I've been so busy just getting the show out every week that uh, I don't have time to talk to the surviving shortwave broadcasters or countries. And uh, But I'd love to see the BBC and, and VOA do some of it um, uh, on a trial basis, just to get uh, at least the radio amateurs in their target countries uh, familiar with the concept in case we get to the point where um, uh, the, the web is completely blocked off in those countries. And what okay. kind of feedback you get from your users? The question was about feedback. What kind of feedback do I get from users? And I get wonderful feedback. Um, it comes uh, via email, uh, and it also comes on that Twitter account that I listed there a, a minute ago. And uh, so at, during and after each of the shows, uh, the tweets start coming in and, and people will post the pictures that they have decoded uh, in, in those tweets 
Um, and sometimes it'll just be directly posted and sometimes they'll form a montage like I showed you in the presentation. And sometimes they'll, they'll prefer to use email and uh, do it that way. But I, I get great response from all over the world, listeners everywhere, Europe, uh, all over North America, Australia. Um, lately, I've been hearing from a listener in Cuba. So it's, it's great fun. For a side, day for announcing what mode you're going to be running in as you're switching modes. Um, so at the beginning of every broadcast, I do a, I do a, a program preview in MFSK32, and it shows uh, each item that will be in at what time, at what number of minutes into the broadcast, and um, at um, uh, what mode will be used. Yep. No, it sounds like a great concept, and uh, much much faster than voice. So. Yes, it is a little bit faster than, than voice. And also, it's more robust than voice. In conditions where voice is difficult to comprehend, the text will get through. And once again, that's because of the error correction. Right. And I, another quick question. You may not know this, but is there is there is this is MFSK 32 and 42 uh, somewhat resilient to jamming? Uh, we have in the VOA radiogram days, we did... Uh, uh, experiment a little bit against jamming signals in China, uh, maybe a few other places, and and it is somewhat resilient. And we can also experiment with moving the audio frequency of the digital mode up or down. So we could, if the noise of the jamming is in the lower audio reaches, we'll just move the noise of the uh, of the uh, digital mode up high in frequency, audio frequency. Um, if it's a more pernicious type of jamming, we'll use a, a mode like Olivia 64 2000, which spreads a, across the entire audio spectrum. And that works too. Um, so I'm looking forward to more experiments with jamming. Hey, Kim, why don't you, yes. address, why don't you address the software a little bit? Uh, there's software for the Android devices, and then there's the software that amateurs use on a desktop or laptop type of PC, and these are pretty different, aren't they? Well, uh, the best that um, that question was from Ben Cobb, who helped me quite a bit in the early days uh, of uh, shortwave radiogram, getting the program off the air, on the air. Um, so the the main software we use is 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 really for desktop type computers. That's FL Digi. And I find it a lot easier to use because I like a big screen and a big keyboard. Now, if you if you do want to use it on an Android device, then there is a ANDFL message, which is pretty much a, a derivation of FL Digi for Android devices. You can encode and decode, and that's suitable for transmitting and receiving digital modes. Uh, via amateur radio, either on HF or VHF or UHF. Um, uh, it, you know, you don't have all the features of FL Digi in there, but you have quite a few features, and it's called FL Message because it's especially suited for uh, transmitting and receiving um, emergency m traffic uh, of the, of, through amateur radio. Now, TVAR, T I V A R, is a simplified receive only decode only version of hand fl message and also it has not been updated for a while it needs a developer uh, to look after it um, but if you want real simplicity with android uh, you go to the tvar tvar app so don't forget that the uh, facebook group for radiogram is very active so if you're on facebook look for shortwave radiogram thank you man pl plenty of activity there too Thanks very much. Uh, thanks for the good questions and uh, appreciate your interest.